stiff neck. So we heard a very interesting story, if you were listening, when Miss Anita and Peter were telling it to us. It was about a man, it almost feels like it's a dream, and he's asleep and either somebody jumps on him or he dreams somebody jumps on him or I don't know, it's kind of confusing. I don't know what it means as the pastor exactly, but they wrestle. Actually, they don't wrestle, they wrestle. Because sometimes you could go to the university over down the street and you could watch people who wrestle and there's lots of rules that they have to obey and follow them. My wife was a cheerleading, cheerleader for wrestling. I didn't even know there were such things. Pin, pin, pin your man, pin your man, you know you can. <laughs> so, and, but there's also other kinds of wrestling that aren't, don't have quite as many rules. When I lived in Texas, there was something called lucha libre. And, and the people who wrestled wore masks like this one that I made. Does it, do I look like a wrestler? You say so. See, he's got like little angel wings. I designed this. I didn't even buy it somewhere. Can you believe that? And so, I kind of was imagining the story in the gospel like this, that this man is sleeping. His name is Jacob, and his name means he cheats. That's what his name means. He means the cheater. And he's sleeping, and he had cheated his whole life, and all of a sudden, something comes and jumps on him with a mask, maybe. Maybe it's an angel, maybe it's God. And he's wrestling. And he wrestles and he wrestles and he wrestles. And finally, he wins. Jacob wins. The cheater wins. And the one wrestling him says, I'm not going to call you cheater anymore. From now on, your name is the God Wrestler. Wouldn't that be a cool name? You love God wrestling. <laughs> then you win. Did he give you a new name? No longer is your name Violet. From now on, your name will be Katie? Yeah. <laughs> when you're 16, oh, it has a little clause. So that comes in. Okay, I feel like Pastor Dean. I'm totally losing control of the children's sermon today. So, I don't know everything that this story means, but I think it means that sometimes in life, things come our way that are really hard to deal with. We feel like we're wrestling. Not, not like you and Anthony, was that his name? Dang. So, like, Anth not like wrestling like with Anthony, but there's things that we're trying to understand and it's hard to understand. Maybe things are going kind of crazy at school or in our family or in our bodies and we don't know what to do. And this much I know that I'm going to finish the sermon and not you, okay? <laughs> Can you tell me after church? Oh, I was afraid of that. That when you're wrestling with these things that are so hard, God is with you. He's holding on to you, and he wants you to know your name is precious to him. So I don't think this has ever happened in the history of the church, but I made coloring things for you to do after you come back from Sunday school of wrestler's masks. What do you think? Alan and I were going to try to act it out, but then I decided I didn't want to get my hip thrown out of joint. Yep, you all got copies, and you know there's crayons, so let's say a prayer, and then you can go uh, with Miss Taylor and have your Sunday school. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that you are with us when things are tough and we're struggling with things, and that you care about us and hold on to us and will never let us go. Be with us when hard to understand things happen in our lives and to people we love so that we know that we can trust in you who will always be there. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, go tell your stories to Miss Taylor. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. How providential on this healing Sunday that we would read from the Gospel according to Luke, the physician, the healer, who reminds us today through the words of Jesus of the necessity to pray always and not lose heart. Good morning, everyone. My name is Raymond Weiss, and I am delighted to be with you in this beautiful sanctuary on this Healing Sunday. Today I stand before you as the newly appointed Chief Executive Officer for Grace Lutheran Communities, and I am truly happy to be with all of you today. This morning I would like to share a few thoughts on today's Gospel and how it is relevant to our lives today, and then pronounce the meaningful connection between the ministry of Grace Lutheran Communities and the ministry of Grace Lutheran Church. And I will make this connection primarily in the unveiling of our core values. I find it fascinating that uniquely in the Gospel of Luke, we encounter this idea of the necessity of prayer, the thought of praying always and not losing heart. In particular, in today's Gospel reading, we hear through the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. In this parable, Jesus tells the story of the widow who practically with no rights and wrongfully accused, she persistently brings her case before the unjust judge. In her unfailing resolve, she finally moves the unjust judge to action and he gives her her reprieve. Then Jesus tells his audience to pay particular attention to the words of the unjust judge, who although is apathetic to her concerns, simply does not want to be bothered any longer, and he gives in. Then Jesus reveals that unlike the unjust judge, God will grant justice swiftly to those who cry to him day and night, those who pray day and night, those who pray always will be heard. In this parable, the persistent widow becomes for us the model of unceasing prayer. This theme of praying always is particularly common in the Gospel of Luke. There are, in fact, many examples of prayer throughout the Gospel that bring to life the act of communion with God. Jesus himself is the par excellence for prayer, especially in the Gospel of Luke. He prayed as the Holy Spirit des descended upon him at his baptism. He would often slip away from the crowds into the wilderness where he would pray. He spent the whole night in prayer before he called the Twelve, and he prayed on the night before he died. So why did Jesus give us this example of praying always? Perhaps it is because he knows our brokenness and our weakness, and that the more we experience life, 
we can, in fact, lose heart. But is it possible to pray always? What does it mean to pray, let alone pray unceasingly? Perhaps we can think of prayer in the sense of simply being in the presence of God, that mindfully acknowledging God is present in my life, anything becomes possible. That in our joys, sufferings, triumphs, and failings, God is there. In our everyday events and activities of life, God is there. Mindfully living in the presence of God, our hearts and minds are open to what may be possible in the moment. Living in the precious present and being in the presence of God, every moment in our lives can become moments of prayer. We can see with the eyes of our heart and listen with the ears of our hearts where we recognize the beauty in life. In the precious present, we are grateful for each breath we are able to take and that our lives and the lives around us are recognized as gift and all the bitterness and resentment that we've held on to for so long is driven away and we are able to let go and let God. Perhaps this is the essence of unceasing prayer, simply mindfully living in the presence of God where we, we create inner space for God. And in doing so, we closely experience the persistent widow's example in today's gospel as we continue in our own faith journey in prayer and not lose heart. As a part of my own faith journey, I've tried to live in the precious present, although I certainly, more often than not, have failed over and over again. And yet there are moments in my life with an open heart where God's presence seems to be all around me. And like you in these moments, we experience God's unconditional love and life has meaning and purpose. In these moments, we notice the simple beauty of life, its preciousness, and we become aware how delicate life really is. Moments such as the day we were married, or the birth of our children, or even in the moments of keeping vigil of a loved one who takes their last breath in our presence. These are the events when we take notice of the miracle in the moment. Sometimes these moments are also very ordinary. We're mindfully aware of God's presence. We experience the extraordinary in the ordinary. I'd like to share with you how I experienced the extraordinary in the ordinary that was a part of my journey to come here to Grace Lutheran Communities. As I became aware of the opportunity to serve in this position as CEO, I began to pray, both with my family and in solitude, if this was a leadership position for a Christian-based ministry that I was being called to serve. And I found myself reflecting on this beautiful word, grace. And even though I had learned the theological definition of grace in my theology studies, in this moment it became less of an intellectual exercise of the mind and much more about the meaning in the heart. I began to contemplate what the essence of the gift of grace is. At the same time, when I was now being formally considered as a candidate for the CEO position, I began noticing that the chronologically ordered moments in everyday life seemed to be scheduled around the number 316. In fact, it seemed that every interaction I was having with Grace Lutheran communities was around the number 316. My phone interview was on March 16th, 316, and promptly finished at 316 p.m. I began to notice and journal all the experiences around the number 316. Human resources would leave a message at 316. You get the picture. On the day I received a phone call from Grace Lutheran Communities to inform me that I was chosen to be CE the CEO, my daily reflection for that day was based on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I pondered this in my heart as to the connection in my journey to grace 
And only after last week, when I was privileged to be a part of a talent show with some of our residents at the Adult Day Services community, did I understand the meeting. When it was her turn, Betty, I won't reveal her real name, stood up in front of the audience and proudly shared, this is what grace means to me. And then she said, it's all in John 3.16, that God's grace is for all of us, that whoever believes will have life eternal. As I wiped away a tear from my eyes, I gave Betty a hug, and she noticed that I had a tear on my cheek. And she whispered to me and said, don't be afraid. This is a place where God is present. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the essence of what it means to be a part of a ministry. It's what connects us as ministry and makes Grace Lutheran Communities a place where God's healing presence comes to life. It's through our mission to provide spiritually centered care and living our values every day that will allow our ministry to flourish and create exceptional personalized experiences. Grace Lutheran Communities is comprised of both owned and managed communities that primarily center around the lives of our elders and yet include services for our children and youth, consisting of nine skilled nursing facilities, several assisted living and independent living communities, in addition to adult day services and after and before child care services. The foundation of these services are the 700 plus employees who share their unique gifts and talents in service to our communities. We are a local, faith-based ministry and supported by a wonderful board of directors who, as members of Grace Lutheran Church, passionately share their time and talent, providing the necessary governance for our ministry. And I am deeply grateful for each one of our members. I have been privileged to serve now as Grace Lutheran Community's CEO for a little over two months in my short tenure, I am greatly encouraged with our potential to become a very special organization in service to the greater Chippewa Valley and beyond. I have very high expectations because I expect our people to fulfill their unlimited potential. In doing so, our people, our employees, will be provided opportunities to become the best version of themselves as servant leaders. How will we accomplish this? Primarily by creating a culture of love, L-O-V-E, living our values every day. Every day, we bring to life the core values of ministry, integrity, teamwork, innovation, and excellence. Bringing life to these values one moment at a time, where resident interactions are transformed into sacred encounters and there is meaning and purpose in everything that we do. Places and moments where the dignity of our residents is lifted and individuality is respected. How success is measured by doing the right thing, not just doing things right. Where a life-giving workplace environment inspires generosity and creativity in team-based care. It's how compassion and empathy drive us to deliver exceptional care experiences for our residents and patients while providing peace of mind and heart for the families and loved ones. Where our communities of care become places of home and generations of love are celebrated. This is what it means to be a ministry. As ministry partners, I greatly look forward to fostering a renewed sense of collaboration in response to the many needs in our communities. As Grace Lutheran Communities looks to celebrate their 60th anniversary, we offer our prayers for your church ministry and ask for your prayers in return as we journey forward to make a positive difference in our world one moment 
at a time. Thank you.